Since ancient times, lighthouses have kept mariners safe using some of the most cutting edge technology available. Granted, I'm not going to claim that a red and white stripy paint job is cutting edge technology, but it's arguably just as important as things like the Fresnel lens, which is frequently referenced as the invention that saved a million ships. The whole point of a lighthouse is to mark a dangerous object or show the way to a port or harbour. The earliest ones were simply open fires burning on top of hills, but over time they evolved into platforms or even custom buildings. On land, they could be small structures that used the height of the surrounding cliffs or hills to ensure they had sufficient geographical range. Geographical range is just the distance over which you're able to observe something due to the curvature of the earth. Out at sea, of course, you instead need to rely on the height of the building itself, the taller the lighthouse, the further away it can be seen, and the more time that ships will have to take appropriate action. The thing is, lighthouse builders quickly found that, rather than height, the limiting factor governing visibility was actually the intensity of the light. Imagine a single point source of light. It radiates energy out in all directions, so any observer is only going to see a tiny percentage of the overall energy of the original light. As that observer gets further away, the energy that reaches them quickly diminishes. You're never going to increase the observed brightness sufficiently by simply increasing the power of your light. Instead, you need to focus the energy of the light in a single direction. One relatively simple solution is to surround the light with some sort of parabolic reflector. Any light that hits the parabola is reflected in such a way that it's focused in the same direction. You can then simply rotate the parabola so that any light will be seen as a flashing light from all directions. But we can go one step further. All these beams in front of the light can be focused as well. You just need a lens. Shaped correctly, any light emitted from the focal point of the lens will be bent to bring it into what we call the focal plane of the light. Of course, any light that isn't emitted from the focal point of the lens, so stuff that's come from that parabola, will now be deflected away from the focal plane, but overall, it's still better with the lens than without. To make it even better still, you just make the lens bigger, but then we run into problems. To increase the height of the lens, you have to increase its depth, and this would make it prohibitively difficult to manufacture, not to mention heavy and expensive. This is where a chap called Augustin Jean Fresnel came along. He realised you can actually take a chunk out of the centre of the lens. Think about it. If a ray of light comes into the missing chunk at an angle, let's call it theta, it's going to be bent away from the normal due to the lower density of air compared to glass. It will then continue on until it hits the other side of the missing chunk where it's going to bend back towards the normal. It's going to exit the missing chunk at the same angle it had entered. So, if it works for one missing chunk, it's going to work for others too, so you may as well take out loads of chunks and really hack away at that weight. You're then left with a series of curved triangles along the original curvature of the lens. All you then do is close the air gaps, bringing the curved triangles back to a flat surface, creating a Fresnel lens. It behaves in the exact same way as the original lens, except it's much smaller and easier and cheaper to build. Coming back to our lighthouse light, you can place one of these Fresnel lenses in front of the light, as well as a few other lenses above and below, and you can actually capture pretty much all of the light from one side of the source and send it down the focal plane of the light. This now makes a parabola completely redundant because anything hitting that would subsequently be deflected away from the focal plane by that massive lens. Instead, you may as well put another set of lenses on the other side and focus the light in that direction too. In fact, what Fresnel actually did was put multiple lenses around the light, effectively creating a lantern with many highly focused beams of light. You could then simply vary the rotational speed to create the illusion of a regularly flashing light to observers at sea. It's said that this revolution by Fresnel is the one that saved over a million ships. Of course, incredible as it is, there is still one major drawback. It's only going to work at night. During the day, you're never going to see the light because the sun is so overpowering. Instead, you're going to be looking for the lighthouse building itself. Typically, lighthouses are placed on cliffs or rocks where any brick or stone building is going to blend in quite well. Even out at sea, a grey stone building is going to blend quite well into the sky. This is, after all, why warships are grey. The simple solution is to just paint them a distinctive colour so that they'll show up against their background. This is why your typical image of a lighthouse shows them with red and white horizontal stripes. It's simply there to make sure they show up in the daytime. Where Fresnel's breakthrough saves ships at night, the paint saves them in the day. But what about places where you can't build a lighthouse? Maybe the seabed is too unstable or it just isn't economically viable. Well, this is where light ships come in. They have the exact same technology as lighthouses, the same height considerations, the same distinctive daytime colours and the same Fresnel lenses for creating a bright, focused light at night. 
The only difference is that they're mounted on a ship's hull and anchored in position, making them infinitely cheaper and easier to deploy. Of course, modern electronic navigation has somewhat reduced the benefits of both lighthouses and light ships, but they do still have their place. Lighthouses are now mostly automated and still found around the coasts of the world. In some cases, their original rotating lenses have now been replaced by a circular lens with flashing electronic light instead, but other than that, all the principles remain the same. Light ships, on the other hand, are now much rarer. In the United States, for example, they've now decommissioned all their light ships, having replaced them with large buoys and one or two permanent structures. They do still exist in places like the UK, though, with probably the most famous examples being the Varn and Sandetti light vessels in the Dover Strait. For those of you interested in hearing a little more about lighthouses and things, the director's commentary for this video has just gone live in the community for Second Mates and Above. The link to that is in the description down below.